hello um, I'm going to mainly have Luna in this video so that you can see how she trains and things like that but I wanted to show you what's going on with the crate so you won't see me on camera so much but you know what I'm trying to do with her and I think it should maybe help you if you're struggling with how to do the crate thing okay so I Luna is 10 weeks old toy cavoodle and <laughs> she was a bit of a nightmare at first I just couldn't work out how to do things and because sometimes you think you need to resort to a trainer and have them come in and do it for you and work it out it was quite surprising that I could get her to be trained in the crate because previous to that I had a cavoodle and I couldn't do it before but now I've learned so much more and I've been watching Zach George's channel and also how to train a dream dog um, so what I did first um, apart from when I first had her come sit good girl um, I had her just in a bed you know just like a round bed the thing I'm sitting in here um, next to my bed and she slept okay in the first night just with me putting my arm down but then after that I couldn't get her to do that she kept trying to jump up on the bed um, I didn't really know what to do I thought maybe I don't need to put pressure on myself and worry about actually doing things properly um, sit good girl um, so I decided all right I won't worry about it that didn't work either um, so then I thought I need to do it better because you know when they talk about crate training imagine your dog gets sick and they're at the vets and they put them in a crate because they need to be supervised for 24 hours then they're not going to be coping very well so I thought it's best for the dog to be able to do that plus you know if you drive places and you need to put them safely in a crate you don't want them whinging in the crate the whole time that would drive you nuts in the car and I've had that in the past so what I did was I trained her to do this throughout the day before I was going to put her in that night so in I put the chicken at the far end like that get it go in and I don't use things like crate and bed and whatever because in's more of a word that I'm likely to say so she'll get into whatever I point to and say into Luna come and she's too interested in the toy that's in there Luna And sit, obviously, they don't know English. So sit was more um, that I just put the chicken there and she's got no place to go but the, to put into a sit position. So I'd learnt that early though with the, my previous caboodle. Now the next thing I would do is keep doing this in, out, in. And so she loves the chicken and so that's really good. But then I'm next to tricks as such inside. So this is just the normal commands you're going to need in everyday life. Luna, sit, good girl. So sitting in the crate, for instance. And then doing down in the crate. Luna, down. So once she's fully down, not half hunched in there. And down is also a, a thing about positioning where the food is so that then you get a use of it. Good girl, down. Um, I'm not perfect in any way but I just thought you know in the everyday scenario and you're not a dog trainer how have you been able to achieve some of these things just by being yourself and trying the things that are on YouTube so Luna look I like using look and things like that where I could then point to things I also do toilet as my command for going to the toilet um, and then only doing the method where you actually praise them when they're doing it so you know good girl good girl good girl when they're actually going to the toilet down down good girl so she's 10 weeks old I probably started doing these things a couple of days in it's also really good to tire them out so they're talking about the mental stimulation as the most tiring sort of thing come come I want to train her for come so that she will come when I needed to like if she's outside I want her to come inside if she's inside come outside or I'm going to the gate and I want to put her, her um, uh, lead on and stuff then I want to be able to get her to go to the gate automatically the other day I couldn't get her to go to the gate at all 
there's a dog that lives next door so she was a bit freaked out about it but then I did this whole treat thing and doing treats in different parts of the house so I'm trying to teach her to not bite me as much so this is actually quite good because she hurts when she bites and so what I was doing was this method of Luna I've been trying to teach her Luna by doing you bring the treat up to your eyes Luna good girl now leave it good girl leave it leave it no sit sit good girl leave it good girl so that sort of method of leave it has been the best one that I've been able to come across is because that leave it then applies to leave your shoelaces, leave jumping on the lounge and trying to scratch it and biting so hard. So I'm trying to get it to the process that she's a lot softer and they need to learn that as just puppies. But obviously she doesn't have a litter around her to test it out on. She's got no other dog to test it out on. So it's a really good process. Luna. So see, she's just, you know, with her name, um, decided to stop biting me so she's really good with toys so picking the right toys that they like and getting them excited so that's a good diversion when they're biting but basically she will still cry sometimes when in the crate if I haven't exercised her enough maybe and well, she just does wants to be next to me but I'll just persevere with ignoring the crying and never acknowledging anything until she stops crying she loves it that Toy, but she's really good with fetch as well and she's always done fetch though so I'll show you what that looks like fetch <laughs> fetch good girl now um, let's see there are certain toys she won't do fetch with for instance But sometimes she won't do balls, for instance. So I don't actually have a ball, but she's got a few different toys. Fetch. But my last cavoodle never ever did fetch. So Luna. Fetch. Um, this was a real surprise. So it's good because you can tie them out without having to fetch it yourself. So I think that's a really good thing. Um, so the other thing that I noticed was um, making their making their crate a really good playful area. So I'll do fetch. Al, leave it. Leave it. Sit. Good girl. See, this is where just doing a little bit every time sometimes she regresses and she's really annoying and it hurts so much like I've got so many marks on my arms um, but it's just she needs to get used to it and over I think like in another week I think she will be a lot better like seriously I was having a bit of a meltdown thinking about how to actually get this sorted because it, it's really painful when she goes at your toes or your hands and whatever won't let go but definitely try out some of those YouTube things. I wasn't even in the dog park yesterday. Not that I put her on the ground or anything. Um, but there were other dogs that they couldn't even get to do things. And you know, even the thing about putting them on a lead. <laughs> putting them on a lead um, in the house and just letting them drag it around will let them get used to it. She. When I picked up the lead to try to walk her, it didn't work at all. She wouldn't walk. She just, you know, dug down. But then it, I led her with a treat around. She couldn't eat it until she got to the spot I wanted and she followed. So it's just quite amazing to watch these things and just keep doing them. And really, the other thing that I learned was always, like this is just some um, chicken, but I also learned that you can put, wet their actual kibble, jam it into a cong, and freeze it and they actually really like it like she really enjoys it so look 
um, and rather than feeding them food on the ground is using dry, the wet kibble, all of a sudden they like it better, um, use that as the treat. And it's only because I've got some chicken left over that I'm using that one, but I really like this idea that give her a Kong when I need to leave the house so that the, it's a really nice thing, or give her a Kong when I've put, got to put her in the pen because she's too much and I need to get some work done. So it's like, ouch, so red when she attacks me. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped and just keep doing the in out, in out on the um, crate so she's used to it and it's not like a punishment place and I never punish her at all. Even when she's biting really, really bad, I don't put her in there and I do put her in the pen sometimes but I squeeze a toy and make her run around so that she's distracted and she's happier about it. Um, but yeah, I'd use the crate for sleeping, I have a crate for the car and then I just use the pen um, for time out, you know, I need to do some things for myself. Like if you want to go to the bathroom, having a dog running around after you, potentially peeing on your carpet or the bathroom mat, it's not that much fun. So, so I hope that was helpful. Um, I seriously was pulling my hair out even a few days ago, thinking I wasn't even capable of doing this, but then I realized she's come a long way. And at 10 weeks, it's pretty amazing. Like having a, a dog that fetches is firstly really nice. Um, and the fact that she's very calm in the crate now and I can actually get more sleep than I could before. And now in the crate, what I do is when I need to go to the bathroom, I'll get her out, take her to the toilet and straight back in. Last night wasn't as good because I think I had to get up three times with her. She was making a little bit of noise, but I had to wait till she stopped and then take her out. But she was a little bit annoying last night. But other nights, maybe go out three times, but she doesn't make a noise. It's really good. But anyway, she does like waking up at 5.30. I'm barely getting through to 6 a.m. And then it's really hard not to make noise in a your unit complex when people are sleeping um, and to play toys where she wants to bark at them sometimes. So the next thing I'm going to start working on is stopping the barking um, and I just need to get more down on this whole being able to stop her from biking, but <laughs> biting um, more specifically because well, it hurts um, and yeah so and be careful about your pens I don't know whether I might put it on here the injuries I got from falling into the pen the other day and it hurt so bad. I thought I'd actually broken my kneecap the way I landed on the tile. It wasn't fun at all. So don't step over things, go through proper gates, move things out of the way um, because having an injury and falling on your pup might not be the best idea. Yes, she was in the pen when I fell into the pen um, and she wasn't that much help when she, I started crying over it because it hurt so bad. Um, but yeah, otherwise she's good. I mean, puppy time is stressful because, you know, then they're nicest when they're asleep. They can be cute and all that, but you know, how much can you take when they're constantly on, on that thing? But she does sleep a lot, so it's always, you know, trial and error, I guess. So yeah. So goodbye, Luna. Until next time, and I'll take some more short videos and publish them. See ya!